Hello, my name is Matt Sherman. I'm the backs coach with the senior national team, and today we're going to uh, work on uh, some kicking skills. We're going to work on kicking technique, uh, tactics, and then talk about a few specific drills to work on those um, techniques. And when we kick the ball, there's a few things that are, that are really important. Um, one of the most things that we can, uh, most important things that we can kick accurately. Um, we want to be able to control number one, the direction that it's going in. Number two, uh, the height or the trajectory, and number three, the depth, how far it goes. Um, so, so, when talking about the drop punt, um, you can see here I'm up and down a line. The first thing is, is the direction we face on the field. We don't want to be straight up and down because the physiology of our body has a leg slightly swing across our body. We also don't want to be too far to the side because then we have a lot of sweep and rotation and the ball can get pulled and hooked or pushed and sliced off the side of our foot. So I like to think of it like a, a clock. It's not the same for everybody, but maybe around one or two o'clock in here so that our natural swing is straight up and down this line that we want to kick down. So once we've set up like that, there's three main things that I want us to work on. Number one is the drop. When we drop punt the ball, we strike the ball right underneath the point to get end over end rotation, like so. That ball is going to fly true and straight every time. If the ball's rotating in a funny way, it'll fly off to the side. So, we want to drop the ball straight up and down. Now with the drop, we want to hold the ball as close to underneath our body as we can and as close to our foot as we can. The longer the time that the ball leaves our hands until it strikes our foot, there's room for error. If I try and drop the ball on the point from there, it's going to hit on the side. But from right here, I'll drop it on the point every time. So we're right here underneath our, our body. Um, the second thing that we want to work on, one is the drop, two is the strike. We want the strike to be underneath our body, we want our shoulders to be over the ball, slightly and forward, and we want to snap our foot into the ball. You see I'm not kicking it with a straight leg, but I'm actually snapping my foot and breaking it, just like a baseball pitcher would snap his arm using his tricep. So from the side on view, it's underneath my body here, shoulders over the ball, when I release it, I'm going to snap the ball into the contact point. So that's two things now. We have the drop and then the strike point. And then the last part is going to be the finish. Very critical. After we've stayed over, dropped the ball nice and low, underneath our body, snapped into it, we always want to finish with the toe. The leg pointed straight down the line. Our shoulders, our hips, and our head, head down. Everything's going straight. That's where the ball's going to go every time. It's critical that we finish in the direction that we want the ball to go. All right, now I'm going to have Duncan demonstrate this a couple of times. I want to start with uh, looking from the side view. So now to work on these three techniques, we're going to work on line kicking, where we kick his, uh, in pairs, just straight up and down a line. Um, we're going to stay on one leg. Our plant leg is going to be on the ground, and we're just going to work on kicking off of this leg, not walking into it or not going past it after we kick the ball. There's a couple things we can see clearly from the side on view. One is his drop. We want it to start low again. Um, and, and two is that when he strikes the ball, we want his shoulders to be over the ball, and we want to see him snap his foot into it. Um, and the third thing is the finish. We should see his shoulders remaining square. We don't want him to rotate over here so we can see his back. We want it to stay square, over the ball, head down, toe pointed. Let's see Duncan demonstrate that for us. Good. Once more, Duncan's going to keep the drop in tight to his body, start with the ball low. He's going to strike the ball underneath his body with the shoulders over. He's going to finish with the toe pointed, the shoulders are square in line, and he's going to hold his finish right there. The strike point was here, finishes with the toe straight, shoulders over the ball. Good. Okay, so now we're going to do work on the same kicking technique. Uh, we'll look at it from a different angle though, from behind. The first thing again is that um, his alignment to where he's trying to kick the ball, he's trying to kick straight up and down this line. He's not going to line straight up and down, nor is he going to line at a big angle. Something like so. Slightly off to the side. We can kick straight up and down the yellow line. He's going to continue just to stay on one foot, his plant foot. And what you'll see here from this angle, most importantly, is the finish. That he finishes with his hips, shoulders, head, 
everything pointed straight down the line and he holds with his foot going straight down the line. That's where the ball's going to go every time. All right, so now we've worked on um, the three main techniques um, when kicking the ball, working on our line kicking. We've talked about the drop, being up and down, being close to our body, less room for air. We've talked about the strike, staying over the ball with our shoulders, our core engaged, our head down, and snapping through with our leg, and the finish to determine the direction with the leg pointed, head down, shoulders and hips square. Now that we've done that, we also want to bring more power into the kick by transferring our weight through in our hips. And really how we do that is by bringing this plant leg through the ball. So without a ball, the difference here is going to be without transferring my power and staying on this uh, plant leg, I'm just going to stay over it and kick right there. Now I want to bring all my weight, transfer my weight through my hips and my core by hopping through with this plant leg. So it's the same thing here. But now I finish by hopping through the kick. It's just like baseball or golf principle where we transfer hip power through. All of our weight and our power and our core muscles are engaged. And now we bring them all through the kick and we throw that weight into the kick. That's where our power comes from. I'm going to have Duncan demonstrate two kicks. The first is he's just going to stay on his plant leg. Do the same kick we've been doing from the side on angle and we'll see how much power he has, and then I want him to bring his weight through with his plant foot, and we'll see a difference in power right there. Well, on that last kick, what you saw was all the power he generated was from only his leg swing and a little bit of his core strength by staying over the ball. Now we want him to generate power with those same tools, leg strength, the snap, core being over the ball. We want him to bring his weight through come through the ball, staying over the top of the ball with his shoulders at the same time. Let's go one more. Really stay over and come through and drive through with the plant foot. There we go. And I hope you can hear as well, there's a different pop on the ball when he strikes that ball. It comes off the foot harder. We'll look at the same kicking technique now from behind as Duncan kicks down this yellow line. The key is that when he strikes this ball, he wants to stay over it and hop straight through the line, keeping everything in line. That's going to determine the direction of the kick while still bringing his power into it. What he doesn't want to do is rotate now and come across. If he does that, his kick's going to get hooked. His ball is going to go where his hips and his toe are pointing. So we'll see a couple of demonstrations by Duncan now. Next. So now that we've talked about the main techniques we want to use when uh, learning to drop punt and practicing to drop punt. Um, one thing that's critical is that we learn how to self-correct. That when we make a mistake, we understand why we made a mistake, and then we understand what we can do to fix that mistake. Um, and there's a couple common problems. The first problem is the drop. Um, if we get the drop wrong, meaning maybe we're throwing the ball up in the air, or dropping it too high, um, or away from our body, we won't strike it underneath the point, and as a result, we won't get that true straight rotation. We might get something like that or like this that's going to fly in a different direction. So we'll just do a demonstration now of what would be a poor drop and as a result a strange rotation on the ball. And if we see that we know right away that there's an issue with our drop. So we'll get an example of that. So what we saw there is a few examples of a poor drop and Duncan is able to self-correct and identify that by seeing that he's getting strange rotations on the ball. The next time he goes to kick the ball, he'll focus on keeping the ball tight to his body, underneath, dropping it straight up on the, on the point, not throwing it up and less room for error by dropping it out here. Um, the second uh, most common probably problem that I want to talk about is that we tend to hook the ball. So for a right-footed kicker, we will hook the ball to our left. And the reason we generally do this is that we want to sweep. We think we're going to get our power by sweeping across and rotating over the ball and finishing, not pointing where we want to kick the ball. Um, we feel that in general a lot of our power will come by planting on this pivot foot and rotating around this kind of whiplash power. But really what we're doing is we're not engaging our core, and that's where we want to stay over the ball and hop straight through it. 
So to self-correct, what we want to look at is when we hook the ball, where are our hips pointed? And in general, almost always, our hips are pointed where the ball went. If the ball goes straight, our hips are pointed straight in this direction. If our ball's been hooked, whether it's 45 degree angles, that's probably where we're pointed. If it's 15 degrees, uh, that's probably where we're pointed. So we're going to have a few demonstrations now where uh, Duncan is not going to jump on his plant foot and keep his hips square and finish straight, but instead he's going to rotate on his plant foot, rotate his hips, and his ball is going to uh, get hooked as a result. So what we saw there is a couple examples of uh, when we try to rotate instead of staying square, we hook the ball. And uh, the idea is that when you work on kicking, if you're hooking the ball, you can stop yourself and identify that you're pointing in that direction. So the correction now is to keep square when you kick the ball. Make sure you plant and hop through on the plant foot so you allow your hips to stay square, not rotating over the top of the plant foot. So now we've talked about the kicking uh, technique of the drop foot. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about tactics. In general, when we kick the ball in open play, um, there's two real basic types of kick. Um, one is that we see space and we want to use a low trajectory on the kick so the ball will hit the ground and run in space. Um, the second is different. The second, there's not space behind uh, the defensive front wall, um, so we want to put up a high kick that our supporting players can contest. So what I want to do now is expand our drill, our line kicking, but we're still going to kick up and down a line, but we're going to vary the depth from about 20 to 35 meters. We're going to walk into the kick now instead of just standing on a plant leg, uh, and we're going to vary the height or trajectory. Sometimes we're going to kick the ball low, sometimes we're going to kick the ball up high. Uh, so we'll work on that in partners and change the look of our, our the types of our kick so we can apply those to different tactical situations. Okay, so now we've talked about kicking technique, the main points in our technique. We've talked about how to self-correct. We've also talked about different tactics of uh, changing the depth and the height of our kick. Um, now we want to talk about uh, kicking under a little bit of pressure, being able to do so with some speed. So we're going to talk about a drill. We can uh, run to do that. What I've done behind us is put out some cones, uh, a vertical line down the field um, for Duncan to kick to. We can do different types of uh, kicking techniques. We'll start with, he's pretending he's behind his 22. He's going to take a pass and try and kick the ball out on the full. But you could vary that. You could say you're in front of the 22 and you need to bounce the ball into touch and there's space. Or you could say you're in front of the 22 and you, there's uh, defender's back, so you want to put up a high kick, but in, inbounds it's contested. So there's various looks. But for the sake of this, we'll pretend he's behind the 22 looking to put it out on the full. I'm going to be a scrum half. I'm going to pass him the ball, and then I'm just going to jog after him with my hands up so he gets used to taking a pass and then executing the kicking skill he's working on under slight pressure. So now we've talked about kicking technique, kicking tactics and variations of our kick and then developing uh, the ability to kick under pressure. The last thing I'd recommend to um, start working on early is developing the ability to kick um, with your left foot. And to do so, I would first start to develop your right foot, but then get in front of a mirror and look at your kicking technique with the right foot, and it should pretty much balance with the left foot. It's going to feel awkward at first and for a long time. You want to be able to mirror that, uh, that motion. It's the same principles that apply, and a good game um, a good drill, I'd say, to practice your kicking is to line kick up and down a line with a partner and start at five meters and every time you're able to catch a ball with moving one pivot foot cleanly, you and your partner step back one foot and you reward yourself with the accuracy of direction, of depth, of height, and then to work on the left, do two kicks with the right and then one with the left. So we develop both feet as we work on the drill. Um, that's it. Thanks for your time. I hope. Uh, if you find this uh, video uh, insightful and instructful, and again, like most things, kicking is something that uh, takes time and patience, very much uh, <clears throat> like a golf swing. You need to put the time into it, work on your technique, and uh, you'll improve if you do so. Good luck.